on air, online, on demand. Watch AFR when you want, where you want with CN8, the Comcast network. for joining us once again. A new study out of the University of Pittsburgh Cancer Institute says there is more and more evidence linking long-term cell phone use to brain cancer. The issue, as you know, has long been debated by medical professionals and is now becoming a really hot topic considering more than 70, 70% 70 of the U.S. population has a cell phone. In many cases, a cell phone is the only phone people are using and some may have one for work, another for personal, use. The study in Pittsburgh shows cell phones might be hazardous to the nation's health, especially for children. Consider this. Researchers believe electromagnetic fields from cell phones are penetrating our brains, especially in children. And that color you're seeing in the picture there represents the amount, the brain of the brain that's being affected this way. It's a scary possibility if, in fact, it's true. So joining me now is Dr. Tara Morrison. She is a neuro-oncologist at the Fox Chase Cancer Center in Philadelphia. First off, welcome, doctor. Thank you for being here on the show. Thank you. I have to say, doctor, what's unnerving about all of this is the gap in safety data. You hear that some researchers and doctors say there is no risk. Others say mm -hmm. there is a, a risk of cell phone use and a link to cancer, especially with regard to longer cell phone use. Should we be concerned? You know, that's really been a subject of a lot of controversy in the scientific community. Most of the studies that have been done to date really don't show uh, that there is a concern about cell phone use even among heavy cell phone users. So I think uh, that the data suggests that most people are safe. But why in fact is there this ongoing debate where you hear some medical professionals who are adamant about the fact that yes, in fact, there is a link, a possible link anyway, to cell phone use and cancer. Right. Why do we keep hearing this? There have been a total of between 9 and 12 studies uh, on this matter, some here in the U.S., most in Europe. And of those studies, three showed a slight increase in certain types of brain tumors in patients who use cell phones heavily. And the what's rest... Considered, what's considered heavily, doctor? That is what is uncertain there's a lot of what we call recall bias in other words the patients when they're asked to say well yes I use my cell phone a lot but no one can define what is a lot well what's this about electromagnetic fields from cell phones that are penetrating our brains that sounds very ominous to me it it does sound ominous when you put it that way but uh, they have tried to measure how far the fields go in. Uh, there's a lot of bone between your ear and uh, the area of the brain that would be uh, affected. And that's really n difficult to measure how far that radiation, as it were, goes in. But these are different types of radiation than we would expect. We're not talking about x-rays. We're talking about weak magnetic fields and there's really no good evidence that those fields will cause cancer. A lot of these studies, they involve patients who have tumors in completely separate areas of the brain than where they hold their cell phones. What about uh, children? In these studies, they were singled out as being especially vulnerable when it comes to cell phone use. Well, this is what the controversy is about. This is what this memo from the University of Pittsburgh is targeting and there really is no data about our children. Uh, all of the studies that have been done to date have been in people over the age of 20. So there is no information on children whose brains are uh, more fluctuating. They're developing, they're forming new connections. There is no information. As far as I know, there's no animal research at this time, so we just don't have that data. Well, if you had to give us some advice, uh, you are a physician, uh, yes. you work in this field, what would you tell us if we use our cell phones? Uh, do we need to worry at all? I think uh, for safety reasons, 
alone, uh, we should be using our hands-free devices more than we are. Um, that is very important. It's, I think, a good idea to limit children's cell phone use for any reason. It's distracting uh, for them as well, for their safety. They could be better off paying more attention to their environment alone for that reason at all. There's just not enough information to comment really at this point on the safety of our children in terms of brain tumors at this time. And the studies and the research continue? I hope so. Uh, if not at this time, hopefully this will be a trigger to the scientific community to get that data for us. All right, I have to say we're still, I'm still confused about all of this and I still worry, uh, personally anyway, because we just don't know for sure. That's what I'm taking from this interview as well. Absolutely. We don't know for sure and maybe this will be uh, a kick to the scientific community to get us that information so we can reassure the public. That would be terrific. Dr. Tara Morrison, if you have anything to do with that, please, by all means, make it happen. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you. So the question really becomes, should you leave the phone be or should you possibly pick it up when it rings? Well, take a look at some... Se oh, do I pick it up? I don't know. There are some benefits. Now, let me tell you this. Cell phones can be a valuable source for health information. I'll pick it up later, including videos that can help explain a disorder or a disease uh, with someone who may be living with a disease or a disorder. Or how about tracking where your teenager is and how it's affecting their behavior? Preventing obesity and sexually transmitted diseases are just some of the things that uh, tracking can help with by monitoring behavior. And you can also actually monitor your diet with your cell phone by having nutritional values of foods you want to eat text messaged right to you. It can also help with medical compliance. Cell phones are now being used by many people, especially senior citizens, to help them make sure they are taking their medication at the right times and that they're in fact taking the right doses. Now with the advancement of technology, many phones have cameras, as you know, which have helped reduce crime, especially traffic accidents where hit and runs are involved. And there's currently a patent pending, believe it or not, for someone who is actually trying to make it so you can use your cell phone as a defibrillator just in case. Of course, there's always another side. Cell phones can be very distracting. In fact, studies show that just listening on your cell phone while driving is like driving under the influence of alcohol. Just listening reduces your brain activity associated with driving by about 37 percent, which is enough to make you swerve out of your lane. Take a look at some examples of why cell phone use may not be such a, a good thing. In fact, uh, you may want to hang it up. There's a slight gap in safety data, which means there's a possibility that your cell phone could be hacked. With many people storing personal information, including addresses and phone numbers on their phones, identity theft could soon be a big issue. Also, phones have a lot of nickel in them and long-term exposure to nickel can lead to nickel dermatitis, which affects your skin. Also, many teenagers end up staying up late, I have one I know, talking or text messaging their friends, and that means less and less sleep time, which can lead to sleeping disorders, more stress, and of course, fatigue. And all that texting can add up as well. Some people have developed painful carpal tunnel syndrome from cell phone overuse. Studies have also shown that infants and young kids exposed to a lot of cell phone radiation have behavioral problems, including hyperactivity and emotional issues. Another study shows that many college students, especially women, are more likely to take risks they normally wouldn't because they have their cell phone with them. It can, in fact, be a false sense of security since having the phone doesn't mean someone will not attack or try to rob you.